if you can get into flow, success becomes all the more likely. I'm gonna start by referencing a study that came out of Harvard in the 1950s, which found that our conscious attention, our conscious awareness can only handle five pieces of information at any one time, plus or minus two, so seven at the top end, three at the bottom. Now this was in the 50s, clearly we are more distracted now, so we're focusing on burnout and flow. If you experience the symptoms of burnout, you're less able to get in flow when you feel and perform at your best. But if you can get in flow, that can be preventative against the symptoms of burnout. There's no doubt that burnout is a big and growing problem. The charity Mental Health UK released a report that found that one in five adults took time off from work because of mental health and stress last year. So the question is, how can we get our minds off the treadmill? Well, one way to think about it is like a computer. What do you do when your computer stops working? Switch it off and switch it on again. And we need to be doing the same thing with our brains. Now, so many people extol the virtues of, for example, yoga and meditation, but they're not for everyone. So another thing to consider is active relaxation. It's about finding an activity that you enjoy for its own sake, that engages your brain in such a way that you stop ruminating about the past or worrying about your to-do list in the future. It's literally about finding something that you enjoy for its own sake that engages you, that allows your brain to power down. Now there's something else that we can consider which is a bit more immediate when we feel the signs of burnout coming on, when we feel the signs of stress, and that's to come into our senses. There's a really powerful protocol that you can do at any time. Five, four, three, two, one protocol. Notice five things that you can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can feel, two things that you can taste, one thing that you can smell. Now, what we want to do is take our attention to the sensation or the perception itself. What can we see without mentally labeling what we see? Right now, I can feel the sensation of my feet on the floor or the wind on my face. And the more that you're able to come directly to the sensation and perception, that draws energy away from your thinking mind, which slows the thought stream down. So it's a way to be mindful, to be present, and to stop the excessive rumination that so many of us are subject to. Now, the third thing to consider is arguably the most important, because for the first time in human history, we don't have to be bored. And why is that? because we've got these high-powered computers within arm's reach. So what I'm saying here is, we really need to start embracing boredom. Rather than reaching for our phones, we are switching the computer off, which means the less chance we have of becoming one of those burnout statistics. Now, flow is a state in which we feel and perform at our best. And the McKinsey Institute did some interesting research with top executives that found that when they were in flow, they could be up to 500% more productive, which theoretically means you could spend Monday in flow and have Tuesday through Friday off. So the question is, how do we get in flow? And when we're in flow, by the way, we are hit with an absolute deluge of happy hormones, of serotonin and dopamine and all things like that. So how do we get in that state? Now, there's a really interesting organization called the Flow Research Collective. And what they did is identify a four-stage process to be able to give yourself a better chance of getting in flow, and it goes like this. Stage one is the struggle phase. Stage two is the release phase. Stage three is flow. Stage four is recover. So first is the struggle phase. You wanna be working on one activity for an extended period and getting to that point where you have an itch, you have that urge to distract. You might feel a bit stressed, a bit tense, a bit anxious even. But rather than reaching for the distraction, we stay with that sense of, of an urge to distract ourselves. Step two is about releasing, because during that struggle phase, we've built up the stress hormones. And a good way to release is by doing some low-grade exercise. Go for a walk, go for a swim, which releases the stress hormones, and our unconscious mind, which has got so much more bandwidth than our conscious attention and awareness, is able to work on the problem that we've been working on. So that when we come back to it in stage three, we are able to slip into flow if we can be focused on it for an extended period, and that's when the creativity will just spill out of us. And then stage four, it's about recovery. We need to allow ourselves to power back down. If you can get into flow, success becomes all the more likely. So how do we do that? Well, perhaps we can consider reducing the email load. Can we reduce the meeting load? But also, can we develop our powers of focus, developing our powers of stretching the attention? 
so that we can be happy and content in ourselves and also more productive at work and more safe from the dangers of burnout.